Bonus for the live listener. We get to do the outro again, so I have it on video. <laughs> I'm Kier. I'm Haley. And I'm Jay from Gallifrey Public Radio. A podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network. Just like the one you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. And get ready, because geekiness begins in three, two, one. This is it. The part of your week where you get to put your headphones on, relax, and listen to a bunch of geeks geek out about geeky things. They're passionate. I'm an IT guy. You should never delete. Most of the time you delete, you regret deleting. They rage. You guys are being like hypersensitive with your point to be offended. Oh, he deleted his Twitter account. Oh, I'm mad. Uh, What? And sometimes they're even funny. Tell your wife that I said hello again and sorry I couldn't be there tonight. It's okay. Your wife (laughs) says hi (laughs) too. Let me emphasize that. Sometimes. Welcome to the GunnaGeek.com podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 112 of the GunnaGeek.com podcast. We are here today, not on our usual Tuesday, but instead on Monday. And why is that? That's because my wife's birthday is tomorrow on Tuesday. And contrary to what she says, I think I'm a good husband. Husband of the year. Sorta. <laughs> sorta. By the Was way, that can, your queen <laughs> wave? Was that a queen wave? You were doing a queen wave. Oh, they, you don't know no, about the queen. The queen you, wave you is more out. like this. You kicked yeah, her out. You, ha- you, have, you have to get the, the motion. Like elbow, that. Elbow, that. Wrist, I'm sorry. Wrist, I'm sorry. I'm elbow, American. Elbow. I don't understand how this monarchy <laughs> thing works. It works miserably. That's how it works, Chris. Works fine, Watch. man. She's like, she's been the longest reigning monarch of all time last week. Yeah, what does she actually do besides be a goodwill ambassador? I don't she makes know. money. I don't Thirty-four know. <laughs> billion dollars worth of money. Yeah. You, you guys pay her how much to do nothing? Well, live listener, thank you very much for watching us live at GunnaGeek.com. And also to you pre-recorded listener, shall we call you that? Thank you very much for subscribing. We do very much appreciate your listener slash viewership. It is awesome to have you part of our lives every week we don't (laughs) js does not appreciate it i think the rest of us do i know i appreciate it chris and sp just might be be met on it but it's close enough international international troll of mystery (laughs) international man of trolling that's what i'm that's funny i thought you were the canadian sensation well that's that is indeed what i am He's the French Canadian sensation. You got to get it right. Ah, that's it. Why, why are you limiting yourself to French Canada? Come on, Jazz. You are the Canadian sensation. I am the Canadian mm-hmm. sensation. Exactly. There is no other sensation. And except nope. the one you felt last night. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <gasps> All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on into the news. Shall we do that? Let's do it. Well, let's go ahead and start off with the one, the only Chris Farrell for real for all and his news. Sure, let's do that. So Fox did something good and something bad today. And since I like to start things on a positive note, let's go with the good thing where they have pretty much already greenlit a Deadpool sequel, despite the fact that Deadpool has not even hit theaters yet. So good news. I know we internet geeks were super happy that Deadpool's coming because the rated R trailer basically looked like it's straight out of the comics. So producer Simon Kinberg said he's already seen the rough cut of it. It looks awesome. And they're in the process of figuring out a sequel. So awesome, Fox. What do you guys think about that part? Is it straight out of comics or straight out of comics? Oh, straight out of comics. Oh, I was so not well trying played. to make that reference, but uh, so well done. Well Thank, played. You. Thank you for referencing a meme that's a month old. I'm not <sighs> referencing a meme that's a month old. I am referencing an amazing motion picture. Hey, when's the last movie you saw in theater, Steve? I went and I saw Straight Outta Compton. It was a good movie. Oh, you're full of crap right now. Did you, did you see that I movie? saw it. It was a really good movie. I'm full of crap. I I'm absolutely I full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> we all knew you were full of crap, but I'm glad you could confirm it. So, so that's the good news. The good news. Now, what's about the bad news? 
have SP, you guys heard the bad news? SP, what's the bad news? You know about this, don't you? Yes, I do. The bad news SP is, is the for, bad news. I'm the bad news bears. Yeah, right. Every time. So, yeah, Fox, uh, this is Chris's news point, but Fox decided to light the lamp, give her a go, mar- uh, launch her out of the gate. Fantastic Four 2 is in works. I'm like, what the heck are you guys thinking? Chalk that up in the win category. <laughs> so I wanted to bring that up because I know that the French Canadian sensation, one Jean Sebastien, I saw on Facebook Ooh. that he went and saw Fantastic Four. So how does it make I you did. feel having seen I that did. movie and then now knowing it's getting a sequel? How do you feel about that, JS? I- I'm going to say the movie, the the production value is good. Very good, actually. Um, the premise was good as well. I I think... The, my main problem with that movie was the acting. The acting seemed something was off. I mean, uh, Mr. Fantastic had, like, there was something completely off. That being said, um, the last 20 minutes are completely off as well. But I think the first half of the movie isn't that bad. I think Kiwi's really disagreeing with you. I think that's what he's doing right now. Is I think I think he's disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> no, even Wing. So Wing saw the movie too, and he said pretty much the same thing. You can clearly see when the movie stopped being great and then started going yep. completely off yep. the rails. So really, what I wanted to say is, it, it was a bad movie. It could have been an okay movie. So, something happened. Something happened, and I think he trolled people and he ruined the movie. In in, in hindsight, he also ruined his career, but. <laughs> well, did did he troll people though? Because I thought I thought he actually stood up for his motion picture up to the point that it got apparently rewritten or or changed or whatever the heck. Well, he, supposedly, from what I understand, at one point in the movie, he started secluding himself. He built like a tent around himself where he would isolate himself to see the shots. I I heard some horror stories. Are they true? Are they not true? I don't know. The production value was good. Doom was completely wrong. I, I I did not enjoy Doom, but at least he wasn't a hacker like everybody said he was. Um, <laughs> there's, there's that. That's a win. That's a win. Yeah, that was a win. It, it. I have. You know what? They can still turn this series around. They really can. You, yeah. you know what? I'm even gonna go and say it was better than the first one. <laughs> the chat room goes yes yeah, something happened it's called fox <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna say that that's funny well played well played but everyone loves the bird right now they're yeah. asking if we have closed captioning for it and we need a kiwi cam i guess so let's make <laughs> it yeah. definitely have to do it. you know you know if you've ever watched like a reality tv that does live streaming like big brother or whatever they always have a go-to shot like an aquarium or something when somebody drops an f-bomb I think I can I can run this on delay to do that. So we'll just do that. We'll have the Kiwi cam and I'll just I'll just live censor it. That won't get old. So what he's nope, saying is he's not. going to break the podcast next week. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. It's too much work. I can tell you that that much. I can tell you that much. But uh, live listener, I, I would love to know what you have to say about this. Do you agree with JS? Do you disagree with JS? Uh, please let us know through a variety of ways. You can either go to gunnageek.com, comment on the latest post there. You can go to forums.gunnageek.com. You can find us on Twitter at gunnageek, facebook.com slash gunnageek, or better yet, Tell us with your voice at 567-343-GEEK. That's 567-343. Chris, why don't you finish that off? Um, 4335. Well played, SB. Well played. There's there's one thing I need to say. It it deserved a better rating. That's for sure than Dragon Ball. Than the Dragon Ball movie. You actually watched Uh, the Dragon Ball movie? I actually watched a Dragon Ball movie and it, the Dragon Ball movie was considerably worse. So, so before we move off of this one, it, this topic, I, I pretty much brought it up to pull JS's opinion of Fantastic Four out and then kind of say, hey, I don't understand why this is getting a sequel. As we got into this, Suncast had a good point and the chat room just scrolled on me. Sorry. He said, um, there are a lot of TV shows and movies that I can't believe get more of a shot than others. And I think this is just another indicator of that money talks and there's a lot of money to be made in superhero movies. So that's why they don't want to lose the rights. It's really about not losing the rights. Exactly. Yeah. They don't want to lose those rights or what they want to do is they want to sell the rights back and they're buffing the rights. We'll we'll just make another bad movie. And and they are trying to build a universe to a degree. 
of their I own. I think that I, I, I think that Marvel is fine not picking up Fantastic Four right now. I mean, Kevin Feige's just getting his house in order again after the big shakeup last week or the week before. I I think that the fan if they would add the Fantastic Four onto and I will kind of say it's a little bit of a production mess that they've got with Sony and Spider Man. If they want to do the same thing or bring on Fantastic Four into the MCU right now, it's just not ready for it. It's not the right time. So I don't think Marvel's interested in bringing back Fantastic Four at this point in time. But I will admit that Fox is on a roll with the X-Men to make it a lot of movie. They got Deadpool coming out. That's going to make a lot of movie. So it, a lot of money. A lot of so movie or a they, lot of money? <laughs> both. So <laughs> if they have to suffer through a few bad Fantastic Four films before they actually make it good again, I mean, okay. You know, they're trying. Even Marvel rebooted Hulk almost right after it had the Hulk movie in 2003. It wasn't Marvel Studios at the time, but they rebooted it in 2008. So, I mean, anything's possible. Yeah, no, I, I um, And there's a chance that it's an actually okay movie, the next one. There's a chance. I mean, a fifth time's a charm, I guess. So I'm kind of disappointed that my attempt to troll led to rational conversation and intelligent talk instead of, raw me angry. Yeah, that is weird. That's unusual for us. (laughs) It's not like what's his name deleting his Twitter account. (laughs) (laughs) Joss Whedon. (laughs) Oh, you can never delete. That's so true. You should never delete. I'm an IT guy and you should never delete. (gasps) Great call back. That's funny. All right. Well, Chris or Chris, uh, SP, why don't you go ahead with your news? All right. So something fantastic is coming your way at the end of the month. Do you have any idea what it is? I do. I do. You were going to come visit me. That happens every night in your dreams, Steven. Are we talking about iPhones again? Because I can't handle more iPhone talk. No. Well, first of all, I'm really excited (laughs) to be able to buy a couple of new iPhones for my kids. Damn it. Yay. Okay. We were looking into that. Okay. Okay. You want a rant? (laughs) I'm going to give you a rant. This is an impromptu rant. Okay. So our Verizon contract for my son is up on December 7th. That's when the free upgrade is supposed to occur. So I go into the account just to check, just to see, because sometimes they say, hey, we could give you an early upgrade. Well, What happens is when you go through the whole thing saying, oh, great, I can get him his phone earlier because he's got my Samsung Note 3 that I bought a couple years ago. Still a great phone, but he really wants into the iPhone architecture. So I go through the whole thing and I get to the end and it says, uh, you are responsible for giving us your Note 3 or pay $299 because we're giving you the free upgrade. I'm like, what? okay, so then it's not free. You're automatically saying I've got to turn in my phone. I don't want to turn I in my understand. phone. I don't understand. How do you turn in a phone? Don't you own it? Not well, here. Y- in some well, cases. Yeah, you, don't not, own, you don't own your phone? Not, not outright until the contract's over, which is in December. So so I think, so J- I think JS, what they're doing here is... Um, you, they're offering him a deal like this is the way I, I take it is it's equivalent to them offering a deal based off of how up here the Canadian characters will offer you a trade in price for for that. I'm guessing it's something it. built in with that because if if you didn't trade it in, they probably would make you pay a hell of a lot more, right? Yeah, the, the so deal there is, is predicated a- on that. Yeah, so there is a trade. If you own the phone, if your contract is out, there is a trade in of up to 400 bucks for different phones. In this particular case, I don't get anything from the phone. I have to give it to them in order to get the upgrade now versus in December. I'm like, the Note 3 is fine. You're, you're yeah. going to be fine. I'm not wasting $300 just to give you a phone three months earlier. Exactly. Because cause technically, right, you haven't paid it off. So they well, still own it, right? So they're, they're you know like, hey, you don't own that phone, so you can't get the trade in. But it's still because it's three months away. That up here in Canada, I think uh, most carriers would give you pretty much the deal. Well, you know what they're going to do well, if you trade it in, right? They're going to refurbish it and resell it. That's yeah, disgusting. and it's still a good phone. It's it's you know might not be the top of the line anymore. I think it's one or two generations down, but it's still a it's, really good it's phone. Three generations down. No, because they're at the Note Five right now. Oh, it's a note. They, it's not an S. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, I'm that's sorry. right. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. So sorry for that side rant into iPhones and, and whatever. But it, OK, so at the end of the month, yes, you can go buy your iPhone iPhone. But at the end of the month, really, what we're talking about on September 30th is 
International Podcast Day. Ooh. Yes, kidding, right? this, this is an international podcast day. No, and, and the Gunna Geek Network is going to celebrate. We are going to do a, a 96 hour marathon back to back. Nice. I'm in. I'm in. By that, you mean we're going to play podcast on loop? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Either that no, we're going to bring. Of... We're going to. We're going to podcast from our cell phones. Just going to leave them on all day. <gasps> I can't I'm do running. that. <gasps> Welcome to the Gunna Geek. Com. Oh, yes. Like you run, like you <laughs> run. Why do you think I got winded in three seconds? In my my impression of myself. So, okay. I figured so, Jess would make the joke first. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you running? <laughs> you know that. I love you guys. Okay. <laughs> so th- there is a website out there. It's called internationalpodcastday.com. And guess what, guys? There is a quiz on this uh, for podcasting. Do you, you want to take the quiz? It's only 10 questions long, or do we want to keep it for maybe next week? No, no, that sounds good because we don't really have uh, a segment per se tonight. So that sounds like a great idea. Okay. So this is a podcast quiz to test your knowledge about podcasting. Okay. So question number one. The term podcasting was first mentioned by who? Jake Butterfield, Leo Laporte, or Bed Ben Hammersley? It's not going to be. No, it won't be Leo Laporte. That's the obvious answer. Um, What was the first one? Jake Butterfield, Leo Laporte, or Ben Hammersley? Ben Hammersley. That's what I was going to say. And I. We'll check that answer. It's absolutely <laughs> correct. Yeah! Because he mentioned it in the Guardian newspaper article. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yes, because Leo yeah. always calls them netcasts, not podcasts. Mm, that's true. There, there is, do you know the gen, the origination of podcast, the term podcast? It's a conglomeration between iPod and broadcast. So podcast. Yeah, I, I did know that, actually. Uh, true. I did know okay. that. So question number two, who is the author of the RSS format? Dave Weiner, Adam Carolla, or Douglas Engelbart? Oh, it's Michael totally Douglas. Adam Carolla. Yeah. Michael Douglas. <laughs> what was the first one? Michael Douglas. <laughs> Dave Weiner, Adam Carolla, or Douglas Engelbart? Michael Douglas. Douglas Engelbart. No, it won't be the same as number three as the last Our one. Pen is I think it's Engelbart. I'm going Engelbart. A pen is mightier. <laughs> it's, da- it's Dave Weinhardt. Yes! Ah, totally crap. two for two. No, it's not. You're saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next Roll one. Back to tape. Next one. Okay. It, question number three is In what year did the first portable MP3 players appear? 1998, 1998 1999, or 2000? No way, man! I had an iPod. I had a. I had a. A Rio Diamond. I was gonna say you. You had a Rio Diamond when Windows ninety five came out, JS. I don't think so. You're right. You're right. It must have been ninety eight. It was ninety eight. <laughs> it's it was that, I think it's ninety eight. It was ninety eight. It was that cheap. It was that cheap. That cheap. That company that had made it, and everybody was flipping out. You could put like fifteen songs on it. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was ninety eight. I think it's ninety eight. I don't think it's 98. I think it's 2000. No, no way. it's 19. It's nope. 1999. 1999. I was 99. Oh, We're all wrong. <laughs> so question number four, who won the 2013 podcast award for science? Was it a Jesus skeptics Jesus. guide to the universe? B science Friday podcast or C radio lab? I know the answer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say the Vatican's podcast. <laughs> I am, Where are you getting this from? I am going I with it. I'm going with the fanboy buzz. Fanboy buzz. Oh, fanboy buzz. love it. Chosen. Let's move on to the next one. Fanboy buzz. <laughs> hey, it's Radio Lab listener. It's Radio Lab. Which All coincidentally right. was the name of the fanboy buzz before it became the fanboy buzz. Which so was coincidentally the name of the fanboy buzz in Croatia. So. We're good. <laughs> Uh, All right. So you guys will love this because you are totally immersed in the uh, Apple architecture. Okay. okay, okay. How many how many primary podcast categories does iTunes have? Uh, Do people still use iTunes? 
Is it 14? Is it 16? Or is it 18? And JS, to answer your question, 70% of the people that listen to podcasts listen to podcasts through yeah. the Apple architecture. Ah, yep. uh, 18. 14, 16, or 18, Chris? Horrible. 18. JS? How many iPhones? How many iPhones does it take you before you're broke? One. <laughs> one. Yeah, one. The answer is one. Okay, the answer not, is 16. Uh, okay. 16. There are 16 so I, I, I'm, podcasts. I'm still categories. surprised people have iTunes installed on their computer. That it is the <laughs> resource killer of all machines. It is horrible. So before I we move on to the to next this, I listen to this podcast through my iTunes. So question number six, who was the first U.S. president to podcast? Was it Wait. Mr. Bill Clinton? Was it Mr. George W. Bush? Or was it, it was George Barack w. Bush. Obama? It was the Bush. Right you after know, we actually discovered Jesus. We talked about this on the, on the show, I believe. No, he wasn't the first, though. Yeah, Bush was the who, first, man. The question was, who was the first? first u.s president oh. to podcast yeah and and well, i believe it's going with your insane like american theory that you guys have once the person's out of power you still call them president for all of their life yes, no they're not is, president is, anymore so is, it's is, an honor president. president so no um the uh, only one that isn't anymore is i think uh, reagan <gasps> it's because he's dead Reagan's By the way, that, that was totally goading the American listener. You can send your... Ronald Reagan your, is yeah. totally dead, JS. <laughs> Ronald Reagan's he, dead? I got a day off of work for it. It was, yeah, I mean... What the, the country oh, shut down for a answer the question. I'm going with, with Bush. I hate to admit it, but I'm going Bush. <laughs> it is Bush. Chris, I'm going to go know? Clinton just to be different. No, it was it Bush. It is George W. Bush, yes. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it was Bush. He, That's embarrassing. He was the first president to actually release his weekly radio address as a podcast, as a podcast. Yeah. that's oh. not okay. a bad okay that's not a bad idea i i, I don't want to say anything too complimentary but i that's i like that that's staying with the times cool i didn't know that absolutely and of course obama staff is completely tech savvy so they're good Okay, question number seven. In 2003, the second ever podcast show was released by Steve Gilmore and Doug Kay. What was the name of their podcast? Are there multiple choice questions? Because if there's... Yes. Okay, I was going to say, yeah. I, I have no idea. <laughs> choice number one, Newsday. Choice number two, Politics Defined. And choice number three, IT Conversations. It's got to be something stupid like IT Conversations. Yeah, I agree. IT conversations. <laughs> JS? IT conversations we... is, I believe, what it is. And you are all three correct. Good Question dish. number eight. In 2005, Apple introduced podcasts into which version of iTunes? 4.8, 4.9, or 5.0? Uh, mm. 5.0. It seems like the obvious answer, so... Oh, I, you know, I might actually remember Somebody this. Somebody is Googling. Five, That's JS. 5.0. I hear who's Googling. 5.0. 4.9. Like video games. No Googles. So, so JS, which one do you think it was? JS said 5.0. I don't know. Okay. I have no clue. Okay, it is not 5.0. That's dumb. That's, that's typical Apple right there. Let's see. Is it? <laughs> it is 4.9. Question number nine. I know everybody on this podcast, except for JS, will definitely know the answer. The question is, what is an ID3 tag? The Woo. choices are A, metadata container used to store information about an MP3. B, a metal necklace military members wear. Or C, a medical information bracelet. This I is so I left, easy. I left my ID3 tag upstairs on the, the uh, nightstand. That's where I left mine. Did you? <laughs> Did you? It, it is the ma metadata it. one. It is. It is. Well, why? since you didn't why? say metadata correctly, you are eliminated. No. It's, <laughs> say it however yeah. you want. You're French. You're not right. It's metadata. Ma ma mm. It's metadata. Your mama's on the phone. She wants to know when you're coming home. 
<laughs> what? Yes, definitely. That's it is where the I meth- left my ID3 tag at your mom's house. Oh, <laughs> good thing your wife's listening. <laughs> Oh. It's a metadata container used to store information about an MP3. And the final question about <laughs> the history of that, podcasting. Now I have this visual that, like, in order to podcast, you have to have a physical tag that you wear. I love that idea. We should make it happen. A podcast tag? <laughs> yeah, you have. Yeah, we you could have sell that. We could make tag. millions. <laughs> exactly. We could make millions for that. Yeah. Okay. Question number ten. International Podcast Day is on which date each year? August fifteenth, September first, or September thirtieth? Sunday, the day of the Lord. <laughs> I'm gonna go September thirtieth. <laughs> what? Which podcast day? International Podcast Day. Mm. And what's the one that you started off this news point with? I don't know. That's it's either August 15th, <laughs> September 1st, or September 30th. September 30th, then. September Absolutely. 30th. Oh, there you go. Me. Yay. We got through this. Do we get another Yay. bell? Do you want another bell? Yeah, let's do it. That's all you get. Guys, I'm yeah. just going to say I hate when we do quizzes on here because we go so off the rails. I know. I well, know. That's, that's, that's why I, I troll. I'm a troll. Exactly. And carrying along the crazy off the rails podcast discussion, I promised the listener a rant last week. So here it is. Recently, there was a post that was made that was uh, on Marco.org. Yeah, on Marco.polo.org. And it was written by Marco Arment. And essentially, what it is is a rundown of suggested podcasting microphones. Now, very, very detailed information about a a great variety of microphones that some of them are more affordable than others. Some are more expensive. Lots of pros and cons and lots of uh, details, a lot of samples, things like that. However, I take problem with this because overall... He recommends condenser microphones and doesn't address the fact that nine times out of 10, you have to have a quiet environment in order to use a condenser in a decent quality scenario. Uh, This is a problem that a lot of podcasters do not consider. Uh, I know Chris, he's used the Yeti for a long time. A great example about having a quiet environment. However, there are a million other podcasters out there that get a condenser microphone, they put it in their room, and they got their kids screaming upstairs or outside their thing, or they're next to the freaking roadway right next to them, and they don't consider the fact that you hear absolutely everything. If you have a quiet environment, it's great, but I have no problem. I'm not going to single you out for using a condenser if you're using one because there are scenarios. But if you're going to write a review article about recommended podcast microphones, you need to make it very, very, very clear that you are recommending the condensers only if you have a quiet environment. I had an MXL 770, used it successfully for a very, very long time. But I wrote an article about it. I talked about how much I loved the mic and how it was a great bargain and everything like that. But I ended it with a thing that said, do I recommend this microphone for podcast? No, because you need to meet this criteria to use a condenser. And I think it's a big portion uh, that is missing from this article. And it frustrates the heck out of me when somebody does this and doesn't address it. You can absolutely use a condenser in the right environment, but you have to be willing to do what Chris did, uh, even what JS has done to a degree, uh, which is is play with the gain. I know, JS, you haven't done a ton of that, but I know you did that initially with SP, adjusting the position. Exactly. So you need to be prepared with the condenser. You are going to have to tweak it and, and really try to manipulate it. That's what I did with my MXL. I really rode the gain in the right ways. And, and it just bugs me because this article doesn't, in my opinion, clearly outline it. So I wanted to rant about that. Um, like I said, not trashing on all you people using condensers. However, if you take your condenser and you shove it in the room between you and your podcast host, I probably will trash on you because I'm going to hear your walls in the process too. You will. So yep. 
That's my I'm only rant. using a condenser because it was gifted to me. Then yeah. I wouldn't be using a condenser. But, but aside from the little bird thing earlier, right? You know, right now you sound great. You know, you've got the quiet environment. So there you go, right? Well, That's proof. And you played with you yeah, played but, played with the game with SP. So I did. I did. I, I, I calibrate the game every every um every time. The problem is uh you won't always have a quiet environment. You won't. No. You can't. No. Something's gonna happen. You have if you built yourself a set like a place, a bunker, a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> so if you build yourself a bunker, you'll get away with it. But apart from that, I kind of want a podcast bunker now. <laughs> cool. I totally want one. You can, you can one. yell. You can I'm, yell. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm envisioning anything oh, no. from the Bat Cave <gasps> to the little uh, World War II bunker that was built into the X Men Mansion in X Men First Class. To I mean, there's so much cool stuff that you could do with that. That's uh, yeah, I definitely want one. I'm ordering yeah, the backhoe cool. tomorrow. <gasps> but SP, I know I know you are a bit of a microphone connoisseur like myself. Uh, what do you think about this? Am I off base? No, not at all. Uh, it a condenser microphone sound okay. Admittedly, a condenser microphone in the correct environment and used correctly, meaning you're not getting any echoing off the walls, you're not getting any ambient sound, is probably the best sound you're going to get out of a microphone these days. However, unfortunately, there for most podcasters, I would say 99.9% .9 of podcasters out there, they do not have a quiet room. They do not have the ability that their house, their air conditioning or heating or the train tracks right next door, or the planes flying overhead or the road right over it, the choppers going by, med flights, whatever, uh, Marines. Get to the chopper. Uh, kids playing video games or your roommates playing video games in the next room, you know, whatever, you're going to hear some semblance of that. And it's going to take a lot of work to take that out of the podcast, that noise reduction, that noise gating, that sort of thing. And it's going to make you sound like you're underwater when you do all that. So really the best bet for podcasting is a dynamic microphone. I think I just wrote an article on the Guinea Geek website saying that the ATR2100 or the AT2005 are great starts. Are they the only thing out there that's that's available? No, there's tons of stuff that's available, but I can't imagine a better starter mic than one of those microphones. And I know Chris has one. I know you have one, Stephen. I have a couple. Uh, you know, again, a condenser microphone in the right environment is is great to listen to. It's a good sound. It's just I don't think it's for podcasters on on a you know, generally it's, it's, you know, I, I don't want to hear your gulping. I don't want to hear your keyboard tapping. I don't want to hear, you know, whatever you're doing when you're not doing a hand check. So, or your <laughs> mouse clicking. Absolutely. That's why, yeah, that's why yeah. I don't use a mouse during the podcast. Mousing. I have a trackpad. And, and, and I have a clickety clackety keyboard, which is horrible. <laughs> oh, oh, we and, know, JS. <laughs> <laughs> well played, oh, I like my well clickety clackety but, keyboard. It reminds me of my uh, IBM days. But you see, JS, it also keeps you from cheating on games because we hear you type then. <laughs> you know what? If I can get away with it, it ain't cheating. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? Yeah, exactly. that's right. But uh, aside from that, I do want to say um, what that was my biggest beef. That's why I wanted to rant. But uh, the the guy does do a very good job with his breakdowns. Lots of good information in there about the specific units. So uh, there are some dynamic microphones in there for sure. And some of his top recommendations are dynamics. But there, to me, it's just too condenser heavy. So had to get that off my chest. Don't have another outlet to do that. But uh, I thought I would use the Gunna Geek forum to do that today. So I would like to know what you have to say. Do you want to tell me that I'm wrong? Do you want to tell me that I'm an idiot? Do that through a variety of ways. But most importantly, I would like to remind you again, 567-343-GEEK. That's 567-343-4335. And let's go ahead on that note and find out more about what the listener had to say in our Geek Back. In this week's Geek Back, I posed a question, a very relevant question, one that was definitely not SP-inspired on last week's podcast. 
Nope. <gasps> nope. Not at all. Not at all. I asked, which TV debut are you most looking forward to this year? And I did specify it could be new or returning. And the numbers are in, the polls are closed, and without a doubt, The Flash is the number one pick from the polling <sighs> sample data. Y'all are sad. saying I'm that sad. now. <laughs> I'm sad there was no Evil Dead. There was. Yeah. We're going to go ahead now and run through the uh, the uh, uh, answers. There was Michelle Ely said Supergirl, Jessica Jones. Oh, yuck. Pete Dooling, who was also on the Fanboy Buzz. See, once again, Fanboy Buzz controls the world. Uh, he said Flash, hands down. We had the one, the only... Actually, wait. Do I know this guy? Anthony Batchman. He said The Flash. Uh, we had Jonathan Courtright also finding us through Fanboy Buzz. Funny that. Uh, we had Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. We also had Jonathan Courtright say, Kamen Rider Ghost. Not sure what that was supposed to mean because there was an LOL after it. We had um, Chris F. say The Flash. Then this Winter Legends of Tomorrow. And we had uh, Dr. Hero say Evil Dead. So there you go. I totally forgot about Supergirl and Jessica Jones on there. I felt bad when I did because <laughs> Jessica Jones, I'm really intrigued by and Supergirl. I hope they pull it off. So I'll probably watch the first few episodes before I decide whether to drop it or not. Jessica Jones could be considered a mid season premiere. It's, it's starting November 20th. They just came out finally with the date. So it'll be around for the holidays. So that's why I did not include it in our original list, but I did include it in the mid season premieres. I, last I, week. Uh, for me, I'm looking forward to some of the staples. I am looking forward to the Flash and Arrow, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Walking Dead. But uh, Supergirl is one that I have to admit I'm lukewarm on because I'm really worried how main network is going to handle the superhero. That's, my, know, that's it, my, my only cautious cautiousness of this excitement. It's the Flash and Arrow showrunners are doing Supergirl, though. So that's what has me going, you know... They might be able to pull this off because yeah. I've really enjoyed Flash and Arrow. But they still will be uh, restricted by network. And my guess, this I have no basis for this really, but my guess is that somebody like CBS will have more control than CW because CW, they 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 really rebooted CW with Arrow. Like and and look where it's leading, right? They they've brought a whole new audience to CW. So I'm sure CW is like. Oh, what show do you want? Okay, go ahead. Take it. Run with it. CBS, maybe not so much. I, I'm not sure what CBS's thought process here is because it's, it's, it's kind of not their genre, but it kind of is because they got the Big Bang Theory and Scorpion. Uh, and out of those two, I would recommend the Big Bang Theory. Uh, yeah, I would recommend the Big Th Bang Theory out of those two. But I, I think they're trying to get into that younger crowd that they want to get that 18 to 49 demographic and they're swinging down towards the tweeners and the 18 year olds because that's where the money is. I mean, when kids come out of school and they start earning money into their 20s or whatever, it, the advertisement, it's, it's there. So I think that might be their thought process, but they've got a pretty rock solid past in history on going for the older generation not the younger generation so I, I just this whole supergirl thing is just not in their genre supergirl crime scene investigator that's where i think it's heading if it's on cbs <laughs> it really should be a cop procedural shouldn't it but looking at the live chat we actually have a bit of a, a battle a brouhaha happening uh we have suncast who said the flash reminds me more of the new adventures of lois and clark and then uh, Bachman, uh, by the way, Bachman, thank you for chiming in on this earlier. I know I was just I was just ribbing you with uh, with mispronouncing your name. But uh, Bachman is in disbelief and uh, says, I really enjoy Arrow, but the fun factor makes the Flash a better show. And Suncast actually said that even after season three, uh, still, still thinks Arrow is a better show. So a uh, very interesting discussion. And uh I, I know last year I started off by saying that I still liked Arrow better and the Flash felt campy. And, and I agree with my comments uh, mostly as far as the camp factor goes. But once you get to, through the fact that 
they are different shows. Um, the Flash has a special place in my heart, and so does Arrow. And uh, I, I still think Arrow has come miles from the very beginning. And I, I really like the direction that it's gone the last couple of seasons. So they both have a special place to me. So I totally see where Suncast is coming from, though, saying it feels kind of Lois and Clarkish at time because it ha- the Flash has that fun factor, that almost slight campiness at times, which definitely kind of calls back to that. Because if you remember watching that show back in the day, it did very similar things, kind of do that callback, those fun moments to things. And it, it, he says in there, it's kind of cheesy now. I tend to agree with him, but I don't know. I really enjoy Flash. And I think part of that, full disclosure, is my favorite DC superhero is the Flash. But it's Wally West, not Barry Allen. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I think it'll be interesting to see what happens with Arrow. I know earlier they said in the year that Arrow would be uh, less serious this year. Um, I hope not too much because that is something that uh, I think that it has. It's a nice balance, I think, on the CW to the Flash. I think that they complement each other in the sense that they are very different. So time will tell. Lily, Lily, I'm with you. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is awesome. (laughs) <laughs> it, you know, it's so funny. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I really, really enjoy it. It, it, it is one of the ones where um, on Wednesdays, I, I really look forward to once the kids in bed uh, watching it. it uh, I think that it's come another one that's come miles from the beginning. It is. It was such a good show last season, and uh, I can't wait to see if they keep that momentum going. So that's going to go ahead, though, and bring us towards the end of the podcast. Before we do cl- before we do close, I just want to remind everybody that we are part of the Gunna Geek Network at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Lots of great things happening over there. Uh, I won't give any specifics on any episodes right now because we're about to get them all fired back up to the regular seasons. So please go over. And uh, if you do listen to one of the other Gunna Geek Network shows, I I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go over to their iTunes page, write them a positive review. And also, if you can, go over to the network, find find them on the network and post a positive comment about their last show. Uh, When you are a podcaster and you do this as a hobby, you're not making any money, like zero, nothing. It's all volunteer, all fun. The comments really, really can keep you going. And it is something that going into a fresh season, that momentum or that that positivity can give you some great momentum. And uh, yeah, do me that favor. If you listen to any of those, please go and give those shows positive feedback. Uh, Chris, you got anything you want to plug? Oh, I saw that says stop making jokes. Uh, no, I think you did a good job. Just go check out all the other awesome shows in the network. We got a lot of people that put a lot of time and effort into putting forth some quality products for people to listen to. SP, you got anything? I would like to promote all of the great podcasts on the Guinea Geek Network. There's a bevy of them. I think what there's 17, 18, 19. I, I lose count every time. So there's a lot of great podcasts about your favorite shows. And just go check that out. I am doing a, uh, a little side project for the next five weeks on Continuum. So if you like that, Shannon and I from Voices of Defiance are podcasting the last six episodes on Voices of Defiance. So go check that out. I was thinking maybe not this year, but next year I'll get into Continuum. <laughs> whatever you want to do dude <laughs> JS you got anything no <gasps> alrighty so that's gonna go ahead and bring us to the end of the show for episode 112 Grayson if you're still listening I'll be up soon And I'm the director of SNESA, Stug it by here. And I got nothing witty tonight. And I'm the French-Canadian sensation. Bye! From everyone here at the GunnaGeek.com podcast, thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star review on iTunes. We encourage you to send your feedback by email to podcast at gunnageek.com. You can find all of our show history at gunnageek.com slash official podcast. And while you're there, why not head over and check out all of the geeky podcasts on the Gunna Geek Network. 
The music heard on this show is by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Thanks for listening, and we will see you again next week.